In the previous two lectures dealing with electrical circuits, we discussed the so-called simple circuit. The simplest of all circuits is one in which there's one battery and one resistor and connecting wires. I'll diagram now a circuit that's not simple. It's not simple because it contains two resistors and one battery, but two resistors is one more than you can have if you want to have a simple circuit. All right, we have a 2 ohm resistor and a 3 ohm resistor in a circuit with a 20 volt battery. The current that comes out of the positive terminal of this battery travels through the 3 ohm resistor. It has no choice, no alternative, but to keep going through the next resistor, which is said to be in series with it. Two resistors are in series if two resistors are in series, and for sure, whatever current goes through one, the same goes through the other. Keep that in mind. Well, in order to answer questions that are typically asked about electrical circuits, we commonly reduce the circuit to its simplest equivalent form. A circuit that, as far as the battery is concerned, is the same either way, meaning that the current out of the battery is the same in the actual circuit as it is for the reduced or simplified equivalent circuit. You'll see what I mean. I declare that this circuit here, which consists of two resistors in series, is the same as this circuit, same battery voltage, 20 volts, but between the points in the circuit labeled A and B, instead of having the two resistors, we have one resistor in our imagination whose resistance is the sum of the two up here, two and three make five. So that five ohm resistor is said to be the resistance or resistor that's equivalent to those two in series. And this circuit is said to be the circuit that's equivalent to this one. Now that we have a simple circuit with one battery and one resistor, we have the right to use Ohm's law, which I introduced in a previous lecture. Ohm's law declares that for a simple circuit, the current I out of the battery is equal to the ratio of the voltage to the resistance. The resistance in this equivalent circuit is 5 ohms. There's your 20 volt battery voltage. The ratio is voltage over resistance, 20 over 5. The final result is the following. Four amperes come out of the battery, have no place else to go but between points B and to A. So we have equivalently here four amps coming out of this actual circuit. Turning left and going through the 3 ohm resistor has no other place to go except through the 2 ohm resistor. So there's 4, ohm, four amperes there and 4 amperes there. Now, in general, if you have two or more resistors, doesn't matter how many, you may, and they're all in series, where the current through one is the same as through all of the others, then you may replace all of the series resistors, throw them back in the drawer, and replace those several resistors with one resistor, the so-called equivalent resistor in our imagination, whose resistance is a sum of the several. So if you have between points A and B in some portion of a circuit, three resistors whose resistances are 1, 2, and 3, R1 and R2 and R3, the equivalent portion of this circuit between A and B is shown here, where instead of having three resistors between A and B in a circuit, you have one resistance, one resistor in our imagination, whose resistance is the sum of the three. Now, we'll come back to this equivalent circuit and the actual circuit in a moment. 
But before we do that, I want you to know that there's a second kind of power that we discuss in electrical circuits. You've already seen one of the powers. It's the power output of a battery. It's calculated using the pi equation. The second kind of power is the power consumed by a, a resistor in a circuit. We speak of the power consumed or used by a light bulb, for example. There's a power produced and there's a power consumed in a circuit. The power produced is whatever is the power output of that battery, assuming that there's only one battery in the circuit. That's the power produced, the pi equation. P equals the current times the EMF, the battery voltage. In other words, pi equation. Well, the power consumed by an individual resistor, and I show a resistor, perhaps one of several in a complicated circuit, the resistor has a resistance R, and let's suppose the current through it is I. Without proof, I declare that the power consumed, it would be a number measured in watts, is found using the I squared R equation shown here. Now let's go back to the previous result. This circuit here we determined through this equivalent circuit analysis has a current out of the battery and through the 3 and then the 2 ohm resistor of 4 amps, 4 amps out, 4 amps there, 4 amps there, I repeat that here. 4 amps out of the battery, 4 goes through the 3, 4 goes through the 2. Are you still with me? You need more time. All right. Well, let's calculate the individual power is consumed for the 2 ohm resistor, colon, the I squared R equation tells us that the power consumed by the 2 ohm resistor is 4 squared, 4 squared times 2, 16 times 2, 32 watts is consumed by that resistor. Maybe that's a 32 watt light bulb, I don't know. And for the 3 ohm resistor, again it's I squared R, I is still 4, Square 16 times 348. The total powers cons the total of all the powers consumed in this circuit is 32 plus 48 is 80 watts. Now you're a little bit familiar with the law of conservation of energy. It never disappears. It can always be accounted for. Every last joule of it. In any given circuit, whatever is produced in the way of energy, that's how much is consumed some places in the circuit. So if we expect that the power should be the same, then the powers consumed, 80 watts, should equal the power produced. Now let's look at the power produced. It's the pi equation that we use. I, we've known all along, is 4 amperes. And the EMF is 20. 4 times 20, 80 watts. Produced is 80 watts. Consumed is 80 watts. All is right with our world.